live and pre-recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. I am Brian Buckley. This is being recorded on September 28th to hit the internet on September 29th. How's everyone doing? You can always listen to the show on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, YouTube, and other fine podcasting forums. Uh, You can always listen to me at BrianBuck13 and at RedTicketBlues on Twitter. And that goes to my first point. Well, let's let's stay in the area here. What are you going to do this week? Are Are you planning anything? Are you having any fun? Did you have any fun this weekend? Maybe late this weekend? Or are you planning stuff for next weekend? The question I'm asking is because I continue to make you money. 3-0, and okay? 3-0. and I took Denver, minus 3. They blew uh, the lines out, whatever the score was. We'll get into that. Uh, Cardinals, minus 2.5. That was a romp. And the Panthers, minus 3. They won by 4. Thank God. I was sweating that one out a little bit. That's 8-1 and one for the season. 8-1. and one. Are you listening clearly? If you're not taking advantage of this, I don't know what I can do for you. I can't go and get the cell phone and have you call the bookie. I can't have you go to the local dive and beg the creepy guy at the end and say, Hey, are you taking action? I can't do this for you. At the very least, put your identity into some shady website in Jamaica. They'll take care of you. That's the way I do it. But I can't do it for you. you got to step up. But I am 8-1 on the season in NFL picks against the spread. We will go all around the NFL Week 3 recap. We will also, uh, what else will we get into? Well, hey, baseball playoffs are right around the corner. We're going to touch on a few baseball topics, uh, stories going on right now that obviously need our attention. We will also, uh, what else? Well, Carmelo Anthony has, uh, well, you know, he's he's... It was media day in the NBA today, and, you know, he had some odd statements. He went back and forth. He was a little surly, then he was happy. He was hard to gauge at uh, certain points. We'll talk about that. And uh, 60 Minutes last night. Wow, what a doozy. Trump and Putin on the same show, and it didn't explode. We're still here to talk about it. All those brilliant ideas. (laughs) We'll get into that, but we start with baseball, and... I criticized this team for their team, their well, their their fan base that whine, complain, always think the world is against them, woe is me, on a ledge, and some of it's justified. And I've also criticized on this program before. But you know what? They deserve our respect because they are the National League East 2015 champions. This is exactly what I dreamt of. Exactly uh, when I sat down with Sandy. Meet the Mets, meet the Mets, step right up and greet the Mets, bring your kids, bring your Please, Strickland, tears of joy for the 2015 New York Mets, National League Eastern Division champions. So yes, that's right, the New York Mets took care of business and they are the National League East champions for the year 2015, and it's well deserved. Uh, the team caught fire, regardless of who they played. I'm, I'm not going to be that guy that does that, like I have the last five podcasts. Uh, but y- you beat the teams on your schedule, and it all evens out in the end. It's not their fault they play in a bad division. Now, their biggest issue going forward is going to be the teams over 500 playing them. Okay, I'll stop. They're all over 500 in the playoffs. That does honestly have to worry you a little bit. That they really haven't played consistent, um, you know, consistent opponents of, of of actual ability. I mean, they played the Yankees. They lost that series. Before that, I I don't know who they played. The Nationals just over 500, and they are a team in complete disarray. Just there is nothing going right there. You can let little kids run in and do whatever they want. That's exactly what's going on there right now. There is just no authority whatsoever. Uh, but the Mets clinch. They're going to be playing the Dodgers. They're still fighting for home field advantage uh, in that series, so that's important. I'm happy for David Wright. He seemed very happy. Uh, he seemed ecstatic, actually, in that clubhouse. They did some celebrating and justified. They all had fun. Um, and for a lot of them, especially for David Wright, he's the only one still there from those 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 collapses. And good for him. Suddenly the Wilpons aren't the worst owners in the world, nor is Sandy the worst GM, and Terry Collins is, I guess he's not that bad of a manager anymore. 
Just, just, just saying. Uh, we, we talk about those national. Well, no, before we move on from the Mets, because uh, right now, they're, well, yeah, they're still playing for home field advantage. They still have something to play for. But that ass hat, Mass Harvey, Matt, Mass Harvey, Matt Harvey, still has to make his name the top priority. You know, before that game, when they knew they were going to clinch, he went to Terry, Terry uh, Collins. Oh, I think I'm going to change my plan now. The the plan that I made out for everyone, now I'm going to change it, and there is no plan. I'm going to pitch as much as I want because I want the ball at all times. I want to pitch every... Matt, shut up. And I know he didn't make this declaration to the media. I get that. He said his man. He said it to his manager, and the manager told us, understood. But still, I've had enough of Matt Harvey. Go out and pitch, dude. Shut up. I mean, you see him out there. He, he, he He's a boss, man. That guy is nasty on the mound. I, I will. I have not criticized that once on this podcast. It's just the the, the or everything. He just looks like a douche. I'm sorry. You know, I, I know I shouldn't be as critical. But you know what? The hell with it. This is my podcast. If I want to be critical of Matt Harvey, I'm going to be critical of Matt Harvey. So I'm just doing it. But even just looking at him in the post game, I don't know. He seems like the one guy no one wanted to hang around. And I'm sure everyone will say, Oh, no, well, let me show you this screenshot. Oh, oh, dear, it doesn't look like they're all, they're all buddies. He seemed like the loner going around, sort of trying to get into one of those crews. All right, maybe uh, maybe my dislike for Matt Harvey's going a little too far with that. But I'll still stand by it. I, I bet you there are a lot of people that have not forgiven him and his garbage in that clubhouse. And I bet you there's a lot of them that don't like him. But Matt Harvey is not the main story. So let's get away from that. The Mets do what they need to do. And congratulations to the Mets and going forward and the Mets fans because they deserve it. They've gone through too much. They've gone through just, just you know, terrible moves. by the, Anything that can go wrong has gone wrong for the Mets in the last what it's six eight years eight years man it's just not fair you know if, unless a t- if a team's gonna be bad just let them be bad let them be terrible let them be awful and not even be in contention just a fool with the with the met fans for so many years which well they've been pretty bad the last few years <laughs> Anyways, uh, the aforementioned nationals they've obviously been eliminated because they're not going to make that wild card uh, which the National League Central, I mean, Jesus, that is a, that, that's that's some rough shit right there. Those those are teams that could, it's a shame that two of them, that one of them is actually going to have to be eliminated, but we'll get into that. But the Nationals, of course, we've all seen the, the highlights, low, I'm sorry, this chair keeps making this noise here, the, the lowlights of Bryce Harper and Jonathan Papelbon uh, getting into it in the dugout yesterday, and you know what? There, there really are no losers in a situation like this. Well, other than those two, but America is a winner because they're both very unlikable. America wins in that situation. Now, Harper, I don't dislike Harper as much as others. You can't deny his talent. The guy leads the league in OPS average. I think he's tied for home runs. But his cool eye black and his perfect hair and just he's, he's got a douchey persona i mean it's understandable but jonathan Papelbon, i mean he takes the cake of unlikable just idiots this is the same guy remember when the all-star game was at yankee stadium he said he should be closing the game if it's a safe situation over mariano rivera and then was too afraid to ride in the parade through new york new york city because he was scared for his safety because of his dumb remarks i'm sure somewhere michael ole is very happy right now michael and the rest of the veterans in that red Sox locker room are happy seeing jonathan papelbaum who will not play a game for the rest of the season because of his being suspended for throwing at manny machado and he dropped his appeal today and being suspended by the washington Nationals. so he is done for the 2015 season he was also suspended for the last few games of last year's season that shows you how much of a cancer and self-contained asshole he is. Um, now the whole thing revolved around Harper not legging a pop up out. It's a it's a difficult one because I usually take the old man approach. I usually take the establishment approach when it comes to things like this. Uh, I think it's become so commonplace in baseball now when people like Robinson Cano, who he's a great player, he he's, he can do no wrong. It's okay when he doesn't leg something up because you hear people say, "Would you rather him get hurt instead of leg that 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 grounder out?" 
Well, you know, it, it, it's got to apply to Bryce Harper if we're going to go the same way. But I can understand, you know, we're in the last week of the season. They've been eliminated. Uh, I mean, come on. It wasn't like it was a s- slow roller and he's jogging up there. He popped it up and he went all the way to first base. I think Jonathan Papelbon probably has some sort of issue with Bryce Harper. And Papelbon's just pissed that he got traded to a contender that didn't go anywhere after leaving Philadelphia. That's my take. Moving on to the Central, like I said, the Cubs, Cards, and Pirates, the three best teams in baseball, are all in the same division, which is insane. Um, watching the game last week, the Cubs and the Pirates, the analyst John Smoltz says he wants to change. He says that they need to change something. Well, we can't change it every year. Something weird happens. This is not going to be a common thing happening every year, I would imagine. But I don't know. That, that That's that's a tough situation because all those teams are going to win over 90 games. I mean, I think all, many of them already have. If Maybe not the Cubs haven't, but the Pirates and Cardinals already have. And they're playing, actually, in a three-game series right now, which I should probably be watching that, but I have a podcast. I have an obligation, damn it, to all my fans, the adoring fans all over this goddamn world. It's a global podcast. Um, and then we go back in with the AL East, and the Blue Jays have not clinched it yet, but they have clinched a spot in the playoffs, and they had a wild celebration. Good for them. I don't know why you would. You clinched a spot. Um, you know, wait till you actually win the division, which they're going to, but some people will say, oh, well, you know, they haven't been there since 1990. Who, what do they care? Those players, were they on the team in 1993? Who gives a shit? I hate that. Well, that, that team hasn't made it in 50 years. This is their employer. Who, really? They, it, if fans want to celebrate like that, that's fine. They haven't been there since 1993. Do you think any of those, do you think Josh Donaldson's been sitting there bated breath since 1993 to, to, to clinch for the Blue Jays? Uh, the Yankees, uh, well, they might not have Stephen Drew for the rest of the year. Uh, dizzy spells. Uh, he probably looked at his average and said, holy shit, it's over 200. I, whoa, I don't know what I can do. Uh, I guess it has to do with a con- possibly a concussion that he had last year or a head cold. I guess you, you hear the majority of people say, oh, it's a concussion. It's two years ago. Get over it. Hey, you know, forget. Don't don't forget. Uh, Jason Bay's career ended because of a concussion. And Tanaka, I guess, will be okay. He's going to start on Wednesday. The, he wants to test out the hamstrings. The, the hamstring, which was why he was on the shelf for a little bit, in case teams want to bunt against him. You'd think that the Yankees would have employed this strategy in 2004 of the American League Championship Series against the Red Sox Game 6 with Kurt Schilling's tendon being held together with tape. But I digress. So that is the MLB playoffs. I think by the time you hear this, the Yankees may have actually already clinched a spot in the playoffs. I think the magic number is two. So win one game and then one of the other uh, teams. Was it Rangers, Astros, Twins? One of those losers have to lose. And uh, I say losers are probably going to beat the Yankees in the wild card game anyways. I have no faith in this team. I don't know why. I I just have no faith because when they're dead, they're dead. They are dead, dead. They look like a minor league team. I tried to get tickets to the wild card game today, but I forgot my Ticketmaster password, so I gave up. And I figured, I don't want to go to the game anyways. So, did you get all that? Real informative information there. Probably would have tried to sell it. And in case, hey, anyone wants those bobbleheads that I got in Toronto? They're going on eBay. Just check me out. Predictable username on eBay. Check it out, check it out, check it out. See what you got, see what you got. All right, so... With all that being said, and we'll get into more baseball next week, and I guarantee you we will see guacamole ads. Brian, shut up with the guacamole. You'll see. So around the NFL, and I told you, well, we'll start with the game uh, I got right here. Carolina, New Orleans. Carolina now 3-0. and New Orleans has not won a game. Drew Brees did not play. His uh, replacement, Luke McCown, was actually pretty decent. He was 31 for 38 with 310 yards, but it seemed like the, watching the game, it did not seem like he was playing that way. But, I mean, that's a quite a good game. I mean, that, that's hard to get mad at. Jonathan Stewart, the running back of the Panthers, he uh, left, did not return. Greg Olson, quite a day, had him in some DraftKings uh, uh, games. That helped. Cam Newton, you've heard me criticize him on, on this podcast before, but... He's good. He doesn't have much around him other than Greg Olson. He was 20 for 31, 315 yards. 
And the Panthers are 3-0. And I also, while I do criticize him, you heard me say before the season, I think this is the year Cam Newton breaks out and become, he right, raises into a different tier of NFL quarterback. Just, so just remember that. So they took that 27-22, cover the three-point spread. I was, uh, or was it a four-point spread? I don't know. Whatever. It, it, it covered, whatever it may be. But I was, uh, I was a little worried with that uh, two-point conversion. I was a little worried with the two-point conversion that failed by New Orleans. Uh, speaking of 3-0 and 0-3, we go Cincinnati and Baltimore. Cincinnati, 28. Baltimore, 24. Uh, Andy Dalton looked good, as he does all the time in the regular season. A.J. Green, 10 receptions, 227 yards. He and Julio Jones are just not fair. Uh, Flacco, threw 49 passes, did okay. Justin Forsett, 13 damn yards on 10 carries. Wow, that's great. Maybe they should call Ray Rice. Uh, Steve Smith, old man Smith, he, you know, it's funny. They did the little promo story bullshit thing before him, uh, before the game. I was a big reader and everything, you know, just BS thing. He's retiring. So they give him a bunch of, uh, pub. He had a great game, 13 receptions, 186 yards, but Cincinnati's three and and they're looking like they could definitely take over that division. And we'll get into more of that, uh, in a little bit. Why they look like a team to beat. Well, obviously Baltimore 0 and three, that's not very good for them. Uh, let's see. We'll look around. I didn't see much of this game. Oakland versus Cincinnati. Uh, in the long run, no one really cares. Uh, the Browns, uh, Josh McCown, 341 yards. And David Carr and Mari Cooper are starting to become quite the duo. So that's good for Oakland. They play Chicago next week. That should be uh, quite a winnable game because Chicago sucks a bad. Uh, and I don't care who the quarterback is. You can throw Cutler in there. They'll still suck. Uh, going around, I didn't see much of this game either. You know, see, I didn't see a lot of the games. You know, I, I'm learning that to have a successful marriage, you can't sit there and watch football for 12 hours a day. You got to be like, all right, I'll watch a little of this. See, this is what I tell my wife. And my wife, you know, she'll watch football. She doesn't watch it, like watching the whole thing. She likes watching the fourth quarter, which is understandable. I, I get it. It's sort of like, listen, I want to watch football today. And... If, but there are, if you, there are things for you to do that we have to do, then then don't hesitate. We will do them. And that's what we did. We saw, I, So I didn't see a ton of 1 o'clock games. And, of course, we get back for the 4 o'clock games, and they're all fucking blowouts. But anyways, my wife is amazing, and I know she's listening, and I love her. Thank you. Um, Atlanta, 39. Dallas, 28. Dallas, boy, uh, they, they scored those 28 points in the first half and goose eggs in the second half. Matt Ryan, 285 yards. Julio Jones, 164 yards on 12 receptions. So Andy Dalton and Matt Ryan, they're both 3-0. They're both playing great. Do we have to listen to this all year? Is this finally the year where both of them sort of break through? And Andy Dalton win a game. But, I mean, Matt Ryan actually get to the Super Bowl. Is this when this actually happens? Or is this going to be the most monumental buildup to just have it all crash down for these two hard luck losers in the playoffs? Interesting storyline to follow throughout the season. Uh, Dallas, they're 2-1. and one. If they can survive the storm without their two top players in Romo and Bryant, they won't. So why am I even proposing that? They're, they're going to they're gonna get messed up. They're going to get messed up bad. And uh, Brent Whedon, you know, he's very efficient, 22 for 26, 232 yards. But, I mean, you know, you, 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 I don't know how far Brent or Whedon's going to take you. Uh, Tampa Bay and Houston. Uh... I think it's just, J- Justice Winston, Justice Winslow, Jameis Winston. Uh, he played well. He, he's starting to control that team there. Um, Houston actually won the game, though. Maybe I should probably give them credit first, huh? Ryan Mal, 228 yards. DeAndre Hopkins continues to be a uh, player. I mean, he's he's definitely being benefited by Andre Johnson skipping town. And let's see, San Diego, Minnesota. Minnesota looks good. I like Minnesota. I really do. Uh, especially with a healthy, ready-to-go Adrian Peterson. He is in, get Mike Wallace involved a little bit. Jesus, 49 yards. But that is a team that looks good, and the Chargers don't look good. The Chargers are going to have a long, long season. Uh, I feel bad for Phillip Rivers. He's going to spend his whole career there, never win a goddamn thing. But such is life, so move on. You know, I didn't win anything either, so. I don't feel that bad for him. Jacksonville, New England. New England is just sick and tired of all your deflate gate jokes from every goddamn forum, and they're just taking it on the rest of the National Football League. 51-17. to 17. You know, Bill Belichick hates fantasy football. 
You know why I say that? Because he continues to use different players every week to just pound pound the points. And you know, you got Brady in there with five minutes left in a 51 to 17. Maybe it wasn't 51 yet, but in a game that is well, well established. And you still got him. He is going to, I think they're just fucking, why am I whispering? Fucking real pissed about being called cheaters, branded cheaters. They are taking it out on everyone. I think this point score running up thing, running up the score, this is not just going to be a few games. This is going to be every game all season. They're going to do it every freaking game. So watch out the rest of the league. I mean, they look like they're unstoppable. But in the same sense, they're playing Jacksonville. They're playing uh, a Buffalo team that maybe was on a high and wasn't really paying attention. And a Pittsburgh team that, I don't know. I don't know how great. They could have easily lost that game. And I don't know how well, I don't know how good Pittsburgh was, but... Who knows how well they are now. Um, Philadelphia, 24-17 over the Jets. Jets with their first loss. Ryan Fitzpatrick, 58 attempts. My God. Brandon Marshall's fitting in nice there, though. But the Eagles win their first game. And the Jets, they go down. They didn't look good. Uh, The Jets, also their coach, his son, was tweeting uh, derogatory things about the Jets and Antonio Camardi, you know, you probably should have gone to your coach and said, hey, your son's doing this, but instead he took shots at him on Twitter, which is, you know, pretty mature, and that's the professional and responsible thing to do from the guy who has 19 different kids. But I guess that was one of the tweets, uh, just sort of like uh, he has 15 different kids and he was with two of his kids in a picture, which is pretty classless by the kid, but Antonio Camardi, grow up, come on. You should know better than that. Pittsburgh, St. Louis. Pittsburgh wins 12-6. to Didn't really see much of this game. St. Louis is only good, I guess, at beating Seattle once a year. Other than that, they really don't do much of anything. Pittsburgh, but the big deal is, lost Ben Roethlisberger for at least, I guess, four to five weeks sprained to MCL. Michael Vick had to come in there. And he will be in a body bag soon because I don't care how old he is and how uh, experienced he is. He continues to just want to run the ball. He does not get it. There was a play yesterday where I was watching and he, he, he actually did use his head in this play, but he avoided a tackle, tried going up the sides, and he was about to get lit up. I'm talking lifted off the ground and he wisely took a step out of bounds. I mean, he's eventually going to... Who is the backup now? Is it still Charlie Batch? He's got to be like 50 now if it's him. But I mean, you think Mike, Mike, Mike Vick is not going to last long there. Not at all. He is a walking... Injury report is what he is. Uh, Moving on, Indianapolis, they took out Tennessee. That was the other game. I took Tennessee plus two and a half, and Tennessee lost by two. So there's your money right there. Uh, Indianapolis, it wasn't wasn't pretty. It went back and forth, but Indianapolis comes out with their first win. Andrew Luck has really nothing there. T.Y. Hilton he has, but Mariota did not have a great game. The Titans look... Titans look like a team that's probably going to go through some growing pains this year, but I think eventually they, they may actually have a team. Mike Francesa knows Ken wasn't hunting very well, so keep that in mind when you're when you're thinking of these things. The other game here, San Francisco, Arizona. This is another one I told you to take a look at. This was a romp from the beginning. First few passes from Colin Kaepernick were interceptions. Look at this line. Colin Kaepernick, 9 for 19 with 67 yards. My God. The pick sixes he threw had more yards. If, I guess if you can count those as completed passes. He'd probably have a lot more. Carson Palmer, as long as Carson Palmer stays healthy, this Cardinals team looks, they look good. They look deadly. They look scary. They do. I, I want to see them play a big-time opponent, but they look really good. That They're right now... I see Arizona, I mean, it's after week three, but the top two teams I see, my power rankings, which are always the stupidest thing in the world. Oh, well, Joe Schmo has power rankings. They have the Cardinals as number three. Oh, they have them as six. Who gives a shit? Power rankings. People that, top, people, NBA guys always worry about, NBA fans, oh, they only have Melo at, at number five top player. He should be number four. Do you think any of that insignificant garbage matters? I don't know. Well, I do know. It's stupid. 
Buffalo and Miami. Buffalo, I, I was watching this game. It was like 28-something, 28-7 or whatever, or 8. And I was shocked to realize this morning, I wasn't even paying attention, this game actually ended up 41-14. Miami's going through some issues, and they're going to London next week to play the Jets. Um, London always gets stuck with shitty teams, and... I don't know. We'll see Miami and Jet, the Jets play. It should be interesting. It's always weird having football on at 9.30. But you go out to the West Coast, it's always crazy when you have that. I went out there for March Madness once. 9 o'clock in the morning, the games are starting. But you, you would think the Jets could take care of Miami, but who the hell knows what people, how they react to going across the pond like that. Chicago, Seattle, 26 nothing. This was a disgusting game. Jimmy Clausen, 9 for 17, 63 yards for the Bears. Bear down. Um, Russell Wilson finally put it together. They only scored six points in the first half of the Seahawks, that is. But they came away with it. Cam Chancellor was back. Played sparingly, but the Seattle Seahawks get their first win of the year. And Denver and Detroit. Um, Denver and Detroit. Denver, after a very boring, well, first quarter. And then they sort of... Threw up some points at the end right before halftime. I called it a game after halftime. I just sit and couldn't watch a 0 0 game after watching football all day long. But I guess Peyton made the plays he needed to make. Uh, CJ Anderson actually took it. And this is an issue I saw. CJ Anderson, the running back for the, the Broncos last night, took a shot to the head, um, helmet to helmet, with a defender for the Lions. And it was pretty rough. I mean, he was on the ground, and you could tell he was. He was all over the place. He didn't know exactly what was going on. And, and you know, they, they took him off the field. And we were all just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what reaction I'm trying to have from people. But, like, at the time, we're just like, oh, yeah, whoa, he took a shot. Let me make a vine of it uh, and a gif of it and put it all over the Internet and go, oh, well, that's so cool. But 15 years later, we're going to go, that disgusting, heartless NFL, these players, these players – sacrifice their body and they're not compensated look what happened to someone like look at this play from cj anderson that's disgusting it's terrible but now it's sort of funny i don't know what again i don't know what we want i wanted to happen there i just i just find it interesting i guess he was taken back for concussion test and he passed how often do they fail the concussion tests by the way that's something i'd like to know how often do they it seems like they're always passing them it's almost like, yeah, 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 what year is it? Who's the president? All right, you're good. How many fingers am I holding up? Same old bullshit. But Denver and Detroit, and Detroit looks like a dumpster fire. Uh, I don't know what is really wrong with them. I haven't really watched one of their games uh, through and through. But it's almost like Matt Stafford's like a bad Brett Favre. He's got the killer arm. He, he sees the receiver, but he'll take the risks. But there's no, like, winning involved. There's no heroics. They're just bad things that happen for Matthew Stafford's arm. I I don't know what you do going forward. I mean, who's Detroit playing next week? I forget. They're 0-3, though. I mean, they got to start putting something together. A lot of these teams that are 0-3, man, you can't sit back. I mean, wow, so the NFC North, there are two teams, Chicago and Detroit, 0-3. That's... Give it to Minnesota and Green Bay already. Right. Green Bay Green Bay plays tonight against the Chiefs, which should actually be a pretty decent game. Uh, the Chiefs are better than one and they're better than one and one. Brian, it's been two weeks. What do you expect? So that's my NFL right now. Uh, well, Tom Brady, who is by the way, let's bring this up. Tom Brady, who is absolutely playing out of his mind, scored his uh, through his four hundredth touchdown. But former Washington Redskins player Dexter Manley. And former uh, drug addict Dex Henley, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, presently, I don't know, uh, said that he's not a big fan of Tom Brady. He's not a fan of quarterbacks, apparently. He, if you remember last year, he called uh, Troy Aikman like garbage, and then also called him a queer. And this week, he said, first of all, let me tell you something. Let me let me ask you guys a question. I guess he was on some sort of uh, radio program. Uh, yes, he started his interview with the Junkies on 106.7. Boy, that's fitting, huh? Um, Dexter Vanley, by the way, uh, banned from the NFL for so many positive drug tests. 
Uh, I'm taking Joe T. Okay, so he was given, uh, who'd you take, Joe Theismann or Tom Brady? I'm taking Joe T. I've got a guy, he loves Tom Brady. And I think Tom Brady, I ain't going to go there, but Tom Brady can't even pack Joe Theismann's, Theismann's shock. Come on, Brian, put words together. Uh, this coworker, that's all we debate about, blah, blah, blah. I think Tom Brady can't pick up a down. He has no athletic skills. He's surrounded by good people, but the guy is in the toilet, in my opinion. In my opinion, he's in the toilet. So, Tom Brady is, how many touchdowns has he thrown already this year? Oh, he also said here, um, he went on to say, I'll take Joe Theismann, I'll take Matt Ryan, anything over Tom Brady. I'll take Joe Theismann first, I'll take Matty I second. I might take Doug Williams third, but I'm not going to take Tom Brady to leave my team nowhere. He's garbage, he can't pick up a first down, he has no athletic skill. You mean skills. Uh, he's surrounded by people, but Tom Brady is garbage. Garbage! Exclamation point. Dexter Manley has a NFL Network uh, biography of him coming up. I I don't know what he plans to get from that, if he thinks that he's going to get take over Joe Buck's job or something, but um, he, he's, he's got to relax with this stuff, these, this contrarian garbage, or people are going to attribute it to you being a ex-drug addict. Uh, or maybe they're going to think you are a present drug addict. So Dexter Manley, shut your mouth. I don't like Tom Brady either, but you know what? Respect the man. Just like I don't like the Mets. I, you know what? I don't dislike the Mets. I was just going to say, Dexter Manley and I, two peas in a pod. Not at all. And, uh, yeah, the Giants played the Redskins last week. And I'm saying the Redskins. All right? That's the team name. I know I'm supposed to say the Washington team. The Redskins is probably the most offensive term sports team name in football. Uh, excuse me, in sports. Most, yeah. But you know what? That's the name right now. What do you want me to say? I'm not just going to not call them that. I love all these media people who jump on and go, yeah, yeah, you know what? I've been calling them the last 30 years, but you know what? You're right. That is offensive, so I'm not going to say it. If one person's offended, then we shouldn't do it. You know, that? if you see like the percentage of Native Americans that are actually offended, it's minuscule too. Minuscule. Um, but I could be offended by this if I were a Native American because I was actually offended as a white guy. Uh, me and my manifest destiny. The fan that went to Giant Stadium in basically, I don't want to say blackface, say redface, with the ponytail braided as if he was a redskin. That's a bit rough, man. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't get his ass whipped by people who weren't even Native American. Because that's, that's really just asking for trouble. Why would you go to a sporting event, especially a football game where people are loaded? Is that really a smart idea? That's a terrible idea. Just awful idea. I don't, I don't think anyone... I didn't see any videos of him getting beat up or anything like that. People drink, and they get crazy, and you see all these... Especially these 49ers fans, dude. They just fight anyone, anywhere. Look up look up 49ers fights just from this season. I think I've seen at least two, maybe three. Uh, speaking of drinking, we have a uh, Abita... Abita? Abita Straw Gator. It is a strawberry doppelbock. Now, you've heard me say on the podcast before, I'm... I'm very wary of the fruit beer where they the fruit is all over it because I feel like it's the first step uh, before I start exclusively drinking wine coolers. And then I'll say, oh, you know, it's not that bad. We know, my wine cooler is pretty good, you know. And then I'm drinking. No, then I'm walking through the package stores, two six packs in hands of Mike's Hard Lemonade. And then I wonder what the hell happened to me. It's just like Adam Sandler. But this is actually decent. It's at 8% alcohol. And it's actually not bad. I feel like it's actual natural strawberries and not an additive. Um, the reason I got it is because I've had a beta before. And it's it's decent. It's it's a different beer. I'm pretty sure it's from Louisiana. Yeah, a beta Springs. How about that? A beta Springs, Louisiana. And uh, they have a football team there. They stink. Well, in Louisiana. But yeah, I, I would recommend this to anyone. Uh, even if you're not a fruity beer fan. I would recommend it. So, that's my recommendation. I'd recommend it. It's smooth. You taste the strawberry. It's actually... The only problem is I want to know how much sugar is in there. When you have fruit beers, you're wondering all the time, how much sugar is in this shit? 
I, I don't need to drink sugar. If I'm going to do that, I'm, no, that's not true. I was going to say, if I'm going to do that, I might as well drink soda. No, because soda doesn't get you drunk. I've noticed that. Beer does. And finally tonight, we will um, end on a frightening but humorous topic. That being 60 Minutes last night with... Oh, no, we're not going to end with that. We got one more thing after that. Boy, this is going to be a long podcast. I apologize. You know what? Let's not end with that. Uh, How far are we? We're 34 minutes already. Okay. Well, we'll just stop in with NBA Media Day here with Carmelo Anthony. And it it was a surly Carmelo Anthony. Like Surly from... uh, Hey, Surly only takes... Surly cares about one person. Surly. You remember that. Duff beer for me. Duff beer for you. I'll have a Duff. You have one, too. Speaking of beer. Did I talk about the I beat a struggle? Okay. Um, so Carmelo uh, met the media today, and there's a lot of different things. First, he said he's he's here to shelter Christoph Porzingis from the harsh NBA. He's going to play a Father Flanagan role and protect him from every situation he gets into. I kind of feel bad for him, Anthony said. There's so much pressure on him. This guy hasn't played one minute in the NBA. I'm going to try to be a big brother to him and take the pressure off. There's going to be so much pressure he's never experienced yet. He's 19 years old, first time in the NBA. This is new to him. A newcomer in New York. That's tough. I don't think he knows what he's getting himself into. I have to be that role for him. I think he means have to be... That that doesn't make sense. Maybe that's a typo. I don't know. Mark Berman. Is that a typo? Um, Anthony wants to be a sounding board. He said, I'll be there for him. Well, isn't that cute, huh? I'll be there... Uh, now this is where it gets a little weird for him. Uh, I saw these quotes today. He didn't look particularly happy, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm just seeing screenshots. He could just be talking to people. I'm going to be fair. He said, let's see, we got him at number four, that being Porzingis. What I think is a bit irrelevant. Oh, could just give us the cliche and say, I was really excited. You know, he says, what I think is a bit irrelevant. I've shown everybody that I support him, KP, and I know our relationship. That's all that matters doesn't matter what someone else might speculate so you know his relationship just tell us say you like i think this is a problem some guys get they get testy with the media and they want to make the media the bad guy just give us the look at the Derek jeter rule of thumb don't give them anything regardless of what they write that that's it they played a lot they played a lot of one-on-one for four weeks straight must be tired I was trying, as I played against him, showing me all these moves. I was trying to learn from it, how to do this and that. I'm trying to learn. It's, okay, I get you're trying to learn, Melo, as much as I can from asking him questions. Oh, Porzingis said this. Excuse me. Uh, so he's trying to learn. That, that would make more sense. I'm trying to get as much information as I can. Uh, Porzingis said he's won their one-on-one battles a few times. Okay, I'm just reading at this point. Uh, there's one other thing here. To be quite honest, I don't have any expectations at this time, Carmelo said. You know, why Why would you say that? Just, just say, you know, it looks like we have a good year. We can write We can write whatever story we want to write, whether good or bad. It's good not have expectations. It gives us a chance to have a fresh start and get an identity the way we want it, and it starts tomorrow. Okay, you know, you ended that well. I mean, I, I realize I'm deciphering through Carmelo's quotes here, and he's never the best speaker in the world to begin with. But just give the cliche. You're in New York. Carmelo, you should know the deal by now. To give the, yeah, we're really looking forward to everything, and, uh, you know, the team looks great, and listen, all these guys, all the positivity, I mean, I think we're really going to come together as one one cohesive unit, and, uh, you know, I, I'm really excited to get this thing going. I mean, it's been a long off season. I've been, I've been rehabbing. Should I do the goddamn interview for you, Carmelo? Anyways, uh, now we can end uh, with a frightening yet humorous story from 60 Minutes last night, and they had two Two uh, two people that you always, when you hear their names, opinion runs wild, regardless of who you are. That being Vladimir Putin, the is he a president or prime minister? He runs Russia. We'll put it that way. And Donald Trump, who I guess maybe potentially could be doing the same thing for this country. And we'll get into uh, first Putin. Putin's a funny guy, man. Um, I say that because I don't live in Russia. He's probably a terrifying person. But he's he's such a... He's a little shit, man. He's, uh... Now that I say it's the fucking KGB is probably going to show up at my house. Uh, 
But he's like a, he's he's you know he's an international troll. He just trolls, man. He's just always trying to add that snarky fucking little answer. Yes, I'm a czar. So what? People are calling you. Yeah, that was part of it. People are calling you a czar. <laughs> yeah. So. And I know it doesn't really do much because he doesn't speak English, so the accent really goes nowhere. It's kind of pointless, actually. It's just for my own amusement and possibly yours, which you're probably not laughing at anyways and probably looking and saying, how much time is left on this podcast that I have to listen to this asshole? Um, Putin's funny, though. And he's just all getting ready for his big UN uh, speech. I think that's tomorrow. So by the time you're listening to this on Tuesday, I think he's going to go there and say that we need to help uh, Assad and Syria because people love Syria so much they're fleeing by the uh, thousands. Hey, who who wouldn't love a guy who gasses his own people? Come on, we got to support that. And Donald Trump, who, uh, I mean, I feel unfortunately we're going to be talking about him a lot. You're going to see his name in the news all the time. He was interviewed by Scott Pelley, who, out of all three of those people, Scott Pelley frightens me the most. He looks like someone who could put a gun to someone's head, fire it, and show no emotion. He just seems like that guy to me. I don't know what it is. Now, tonight, he seems like that guy that when they find all the bodies in his basement and they lead him out where normally all the people are like, I can't believe it. He was the last. He was such a nice guy. That I would be there saying, no, that is the guy who I thought did it all along. He scared the shit out of me, and I'm surprised it took so long to catch him. Um, you know, Trump said his normal stuff. He, he, he laid out a plan where basically he's going to stronghold countries and to do stuff for us. And what? He's going to round up illegal immigrants, and he's going to send them back, and they're going to be happy. <laughs> they're going to love it. Like when the, you know, the... the in, re- in uh, you know, uh, Revenge of the... Not Revenge of the Nerds. The the apes. The... the What's the stupid... Oh, God. The, the ape people. Revenge of the apes. That's not the name of the movie. What is the name of that movie? Planet of the Apes. Revenge of the Apes. Uh, Planet of the Apes. When, you know, when they throw the basket netting all over the humans. They, they, they were having a great old time. They loved all that. Damn dirty apes. So he's just going to throw it all over and say, hey, come on, get them up like they're pulling up shrimp. And say, we got you, we're bringing you home. And they're all going to cheers. Thank you. Oh, boy. Uh, what else did he say? Yeah, China's going to do all this stuff for us. Uh, we're going to move. He's going to. Some people aren't going to have to pay taxes. I know that's going to get a lot of fucking dullards attentions. Oh, we don't have to pay taxes no more. Um, yeah, that's about it. I just. Eventually, Trump is, uh, it's going to wear off, people. It is, it is interesting. But the problem is, you see, they say, he's leading the polls. He's leading, Jesus, 42 minutes. He's leading the polls. Yeah, he's leading the polls, but if you ask those people who he's leading the polls with, would they vote for him? The majority say no. Who knows, man? If Joe Biden doesn't run, this is my opinion, then we're screwed. Because I think everyone else is going to be terrible. Yeah, I said it. Or, but put it this way. They may not be terrible, but they're not going to work with uh, Congress very well, and they're going to be a very ineffective president for better or worse. That's my political shit for this week. Uh, remember, you can always listen to the show on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, YouTube, and you can follow me at BrianBuck13 and at Red Ticket Blues. And, you know, check this. If you're on Facebook, if it's working, God, the world still was revolving. When Facebook went down. Where were you the day Facebook went down? <laughs> Trying to upload all these pictures of when I went to the bar last week. Um, if you're on there, Red Ticket Blue Sports. Next time you're on there, because I know you guys go on there. So look at this shit. Just look it up and like it. And then just log off. That's all you got to do. Then it'll go back forever again until your Aunt Susie says, Hey, party last week. I put pictures on Facebook. Like it. I'm asking you to like stuff just like Aunt Susie does. Um, and leave a review on whatever podcasting forum you listen to. A review, stars, verbal, re- not a verbal, written review, whatever you want to do. There will be a podcast Thursday. Last week, uh, we didn't have the guests. We didn't have the podcast. All sorts of shit came up. You don't want to hear it. But I'll have more for you on Thursday. With that being said, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>